two of the solutions for your practice problems today. Um, just remember that your goal between yesterday and today was to finish up objective 8.5 of the notes and these 10 practice problems. Do not forget you are collecting daily data for your city for this project. And after we go over this concept, we're going to use relative humidity and dew point to look at our data that you have all been collecting and create a graph and analyze it and make conclusions about dew point, air temperature, and how it impacts the relative humidity and therefore weather. So on page 13, we had the temperature um, charts that have Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. And on the right of it, we also have air pressure. And remember, a barometer is used to measure air pressure. We use millibars for the station models. However, standard format for lovely Americans is mainly in inches of mercury. Uh, that's what inches of HG stands for here. So let me just uh, pull this out. There we go. Um, so really, the inches in mercury, you'll use that if um, you need to convert. Okay. Um, so again, we're just going to look over, and it's very similar. We're just going to find the correct location of the value, and then follow it over to convert to inches of mercury. Or if we have inches of mercury, we'll follow it over to do millibars. Now remember, the scale is a little different. Millibars is easy. Each individual line is worth one. So from 1004 to 1008, each line 1005, 1006, 1007, 1008. However, in inches of mercury, it goes by the nearest hundredth. That is one, two decimal places. Okay, so if we notice, this is 29.7, 29.8, there are 10 spaces. So each individual line, we go up by a hundredth. 0 0.71, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, 0 0.74. Um, so please make sure that you, you take that into consideration. So for number five, it says barometric pressure of 1,021 millibars is how many inches of mercury? So 1,021, here's 1,020. This is 1,021. If we follow it over, it falls on the larger line halfway between 30.1 and 30.2. So most of you halfway between 30.1 and 30.2 would be 30.15. But if we are unable to make that quick conclusion, we can count. We can go with 30.10, 30.11, 30.12, 30.13, 30.14, 30.15, 30.16, 30.17, 30.18, 30.19, 30.20, 30.21, 30.22, 30.23, 30.24, 30.25, 5. So the answer for that one should be 30.15. Now, number six is which statement best explains why an increase in the relative humidity of a parcel of air generally increases the chance of precipitation. Now remember, humidity is how much water vapor makes up that portion of air. So let's look at this one little idea here. Say I have two boxes. Okay, they each are the same size, even though I didn't draw them perfectly the same size. Now, let's say half of this box is full of water vapor. We would say that this is 50% full, meaning that the humidity is 50%. Let's say that we put a little bit more water in there, and now we fill almost the entire box up, except for the small little corner. We now have 90% full of water. It's 90% full, meaning that we have a higher humidity, more water vapor, chances of it raining are much higher. So as we increase the humidity of the air, we're essentially adding more water vapor to it. If we increase the water vapor, we have a higher chance of the air temperature being closer to the dew point, making cloud formation more likely. So the best answer would be D. Remember that a sling psychrometer is used to determine relative humidity or dew point. And your last few are using the table um, on page 12. Again, 
So what's the relative humidity when the dry bulb, okay, remember this is the air temperature, is 16 degrees Celsius, and the wet bulb is 14 degrees Celsius. First thing we notice, they are very close together. Chances are that we have a high humidity. Remember, the closer the two temperatures are, the higher the humidity tends to be. So 16 degrees is the dry bulb. 14 degrees is the wet bulb. We subtract them to get our difference. The difference is then 2. James, please don't put anything in the fish tank, okay? Thank you. We use the difference and the dry bulb to get the humidity. So let's backtrack really quick. We're at the relative humidity table here. We said it was 16 and 14. That gave us a difference of 2. Remember, we used the difference in the dry bulb. So here's our dry bulb. 16, the difference is 2. We follow it down. And if we notice, we have a very high percentage of the humidity. That makes sense. When those two temperatures are close, the wet bulb and the dry bulb, when they are close together, we have a high humidity and a greater chance of rain. So 80%. Now, what if I wanted to know the dew point? Well, I would assume that the dew point is going to be very close to 16. And the reason I assumed that is because we have very humid air. Remember, the higher the humidity, the closer we are to the dew point. So let's just look. This isn't a question, but let's look. At 16 degrees, if there was a difference of 2, that means that the dew point temperature would be 13 degrees. That is really close to 16. And that means that if we went from 16 degrees and it all of a sudden got really cold and dropped to 13 degrees, we would then have a difference between the air temperature and the dew point of zero. The wet bulb and the dry bulb would have a difference of zero. Let's assume that, let's say maybe they were both 16, or you could say they were both 13. In either case, the difference is 0 degrees Celsius. And any time that the difference is 0 degrees Celsius, if we look over here, the humidity is 100%. So, um, yes, buddy, 80%. Um, I have two more questions left, and then I'll put the TV on for you. On a cold winter day, the air temperature is 2 degrees Celsius and the wet bulb is negative 1. What is the relative humidity? So first, again, we're doing relative humidity. I'm going to take the air temperature. This is the dry bulb. I'm going to subtract the wet bulb from it, negative 1. Now, be careful here. 2 and, and 1, you would think the difference is only 1, but the difference is actually 3 degrees here. Remember that from negative 1 to go to a positive 2, we have to cross the zero mark. So if we're going to go from negative one to positive two, at first we have to step up one degree to get to zero, and then another two degrees making the total a change of three. So three degrees is the difference, and the air temperature is two. And we are looking for the humidity. So again, we're at the humidity. We're making sure we're using the right chart. A lot of times people use the wrong chart, and I hate to say it, guys, a lot of times they're going to put one of the answers as being the wrong chart answer. So if you're supposed to calculate humidity, which we'll do here, we said the air temperature was 2, the difference was 3. The correct answer in this case would be 51 degrees. Or sorry, not degrees, percent. 51 percent. That is the relative humidity. Now, let's say I went over and accidentally used the dew point. And I used 2, and I found my difference of 3. And then I followed it all the way over. We notice that we have negative 6. Now, generally, what they end up doing is they'll end up putting that value as one of the answers. And since we can't have a negative percent, they'll just make it positive. They like to do this. Remember my when I mentioned to you guys that when they design these questions, they're looking for the most missed. What are the common mistakes 
because they want to see you students resolve those issues. So if we look at the answers, we we see that they actually gave us the six that I was telling you they might do it. The correct answer is 51. Yes, buddy. The garbage is in my uh, fly tying room. Okay. You know where that is. You've lived here for three years. A parcel of air has a dry bulb temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 55. What's the dew point? So we ask ourselves, oh, how can I solve this if I don't have, I don't know why that keeps popping up. How can I solve this if I don't have the wet bulb or the difference? Well, you need to figure out the difference and then you need to go to the dew point. We know the humidity is 55. We know that the dry bulb is 24. So let's look at that at the humidity chart. We said 24 is the dry bulb. The relative humidity is 55%. So we follow it over 100, 92, 84, 76. All the way there is the 55%. We follow the 55% up. We get a difference of 6. Now that I have my dry bulb temperature and the difference, which is also called the depression, I can answer this next question. The question said, what's the dew point temperature? Or what is the temperature in which we would reach 100% humidity if the air all of a sudden dropped from 24 degrees to this temperature? So we said the difference was 6 and the air temp was 24. Remember, that's also called the dry bulb. We follow it across and figure out where they meet. They meet at 14 degrees. So if the air were to drop from 24 and directly change to 14 degrees, we would have condensation, cloud formation, high chance of dew forming, precipitation, cloud cover. Um, again, the closer we get to that dew point, the greater the chance for rain, the higher the humidity. So the dew point would be 14 degrees. All right, guys, that is it. Um, I will be posting a Google Classroom form with some practice problems and then also a Castle Learning assignment. Those will be your two big assignments this week. Um, other than that, Wednesday into Thursday, we will start creating the graph together so that you folks have a little um, better understanding on week three of the project. I got um, an Elmo one. How did Elmo climb the roof? Because he saw it and he ate his head off the roof. Okay, um, I guess that's your joke of the day.